Howdy guys, welcome to another vlog. Let me like angle this. We're finally pretty much caught up with catching you guys up with everything we've been doing since November and December, all the conventions, all the travel. We're just taking care of stuff here at home. So a bit of an update. We are currently working on a lot of art right now. Jasmine has been busting her butt doing commissions and I've been busting my butt doing a Kickstarter because our Etsy shop got closed back in the beginning of December. We've just been kind of settling at home and coming up with different things that we can do to make up for that income. Being really real with you guys, that's why we've been working off like our butts. We're going to potentially try out Amazon Handmade. I just did like the identity verification thing yesterday. You guys are just gonna dive headfirst into what our weekly life is like juggling all of these things together. It's gonna be a jam-packed vlog. It's gonna be a fun vlog. We're gonna chill, we're gonna draw, we're gonna talk. We're gonna have cats. So two of our cats got adopted, so we have slightly less cats, but still many. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, or if you guys are watching for the first time, we are artists, girlfriends, and we run a cat rescue. It is a official 501c3 nonprofit. And we are a public charity, and we rescue cats and kittens of all ages. We foster, we adopt them out, and we do TNR. Our traps currently are with someone that we're helping her handle a colony. All your support goes towards supporting these guys. You wanna support us? This is our shop right here. It has all of our stuff on it. This is our rescue website that has all the cats. It has applications to adopt, to foster, all that good stuff on there. Our donation links, our Amazon wish list for these guys. If you want to do it the free way, you can just like, comment, or subscribe. You know, that is the easiest way to help us grow on this weird platform that is YouTube. On to the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All right. Good morning. We're between watching horror games and commission references. I think Jasmine's almost done. It is Tuesday. Okay, so commissions. Are we ready to talk about it? If you guys haven't seen the previous vlog that we did about how I format commissions, go check that one out first. It mainly talks about why I format the way I format things on one canvas and about self-preservation, like my insight as someone who's done commissions many a times. Taking commissions is such a toughie for everyone, including myself, and every time I work on it, I figure something new out that works better and better. This is me sharing a bit more of the step-by-step -step of how I tackle commissions in batches. Feel free to take notes and see if anything is applicable to you, but it might not because everyone has their comfort zone and it's just about figuring yourself out and what works best for you. Yeah, let's get started. I guess to start off, like why am I doing commissions? Um, it's been a struggle this year for sure. It's not been the best start of the year at all. We're trying our best to overcome being broke as hell. Etsy really shot us in the foot. That was our main income. We know all it takes is to get people to see our stuff, to get people to buy it, but that in itself is a hefty task. So while we're struggling with finding eyes on our store, I have to kind of supplement our income with commissions. My strength in these times when I need income, like for emergency, a surgery, medical, what have you, or just in this case, just staying afloat has always been commissions. It's what I know best and it's what I reach out for. I'm very grateful that people are interested in the kinds of things that I have to offer. So let's talk a little bit about numbers. When I'm able to take my time, I can usually do 20 commissions every two weeks. Now, when I say taking my time, that means that there's a singular emergency event that I need to raise money for in order to supplement our income, meaning I need to make about 1,000 up to 2,000 or more in order to do that. That's usually what I do. However, that takes a lot of fore planning because for me, I like to take payment after I'm done. I don't know about you guys, but I struggle with the idea of getting paid beforehand and then doing the work because I'm like, okay, I have the money. There's less pressure under my ass to work hard and I don't want to have all this stuff in my queue. So I do take the risk on my end to get paid afterwards unless the commissioner wants to pay in advance. 
Um, I don't give that commissioner any special privileges or anything. It's just more to their convenience. Because of that, yeah, it takes floor planning. I have to make sure that by the time I'm done with the 20 slots, the bills haven't already come and bitten my ass and put me in the negatives or something or another. Because this isn't a singular emergency event, I basically have to suck it up with my original structure and have to do a smaller canvas so I can finish about two commissions a day. Let's say every two days I can finish four and by the third day I can get paid for everything that I've gotten done and I can go from there that way there's constantly an inflow of income that's supplementing our store. It's a little embarrassing and I feel a little bit ashamed for be being so broke. Um, this is just like me and my internal thing like struggle but I have to remind myself a lot that this is correlated to the invisible like domino effect of the recession and that uh, I'm not alone struggling in all of this so I'm kind of just trying to move past it and share with you guys a very real struggle that we're having and hope that you guys understand moving on to organizing commissions getting into the specifics step one create a google form that's concise so this is for the clients to really fill out any specifics that they have in their mind if they're an indecisive client they basically have to be decisive by the point that they fill out the form and that saves you a lot of time from having to take individual notes perhaps this client talks in fragments of thoughts perhaps this client is very indecisive well the form basically forces them to be decisive and to know what they want that helps a lot of back and forth and that eats up a lot of time I find that socializing and archiving the commissions takes more willpower and effort in me to do than the actual commission itself so anything that limits what makes me uncomfortable is a plus I also tell them that if their Google form is not concise that it could actually lead into a surcharge because of any complications and communications and whatnot. Step two, creating a notions archive. Now I have the free version of the notions because honestly I don't have the money or the luxury of doing the notions premium. I don't think I really need it. Notions is just a lot more pleasant to me and is a lot more approachable. It's cleaner than a Google Excel sheet. I just like it more. What's nice is that I can click on one client on my notions table and I just have have all of their specifications right there on the sheet. I do struggle to read. Um, I have no idea if I'm dyslexic or not, uh, but I do struggle to read so sometimes I'll miss information or I'll misread something. If I don't have it organized a certain way, that margin of error increases. That's not to say I don't make margins of errors now, but it definitely helps. Step three, a social template. So this is something that I do and hopefully it doesn't read as robotic or anything in my google doc social template it has things that are most commonly spoken between me and my commissioners so things like i've accepted your commission i have a couple of questions about your commission here's how you pay in advance i've finished your commissions here it is um here's how you pay etc like these are just things that are such time savers if you could just copy and paste them this is a very personal thing i'm a very anxious person when it comes to social interactions so it just lessens the blow on my whatever is happening in here to just have something structured and know that it, it, it doesn't have to be complicated I think the people pleaser in me is just like I have to be peppy all the time I have to read a certain way all the time and like it doesn't have to be the case this is a commission you're not getting paid to to offer lip service and all sorts of things like just you're okay you're okay and your art is okay just send it <laughs> just as a tidbit along with the social template a really good frequently asked questions or terms of agreement really helps minimize what you have to say they have already done all the reading that they should have done and therefore there should be less questions so that's something that's just like a really helpful advice i think step four i have a pure ref if you guys don't know pure ref is an app that you can pull up alongside your art and it stays on your screen a lot of times commissioners will have common poses that they require of me like a cheek kiss half hug leaning etc I have options on my Google form because of that I can kind of predict 
what poses I should have pulled up. So I have poses that, that inspire me when it comes to characters with a huge height difference or characters with a huge build difference or etc etc. That just helps prepare my mind for compositions instead of like overwhelming myself with a totally blank canvas. Having Pure Heref right next to me helps me digest the information a lot easier. So I have squares that are to size of each canvas. In my case it's about 3 inch by 3 inch squares and then I create a blockade that isolate each commission into little squares. And then step six would be just to do line art. Now that you have everything archived and organized and you have your pure ref pulled up, you can now start line art. And this is as simple as it sounds. I just work on line art for each slot. Step six, which gets to be a little complicated. Color blocking is just a really essential tool for me so that I can work on something faster. I basically color block the entire canvas. I also color code the, the layers so that I know, okay, these two layers are skin. So sometimes you'll have two characters. So this one might be the right character. This one will be the left character or vice versa. Even though I'm on this huge canvas working with many different things, I color code my layers now. Yeah. And then what I do is, if I'm not working on the layer, everything else is grayscaled. Gray this out, gray this out. And not everything is grayed out except for his hair and his fur and belts. It distracts me less and it also shows me what else needs to be rendered. Like that. Wow! <laughs> I cannot for the life of me deal with like 200 layers. I'm not gonna label every single 200 layers but this makes it so much more manageable for me. Every time I finish a commission I just compress it down back to those color coded layers. I use clipping mask to paint on top of the color block. Once I'm done with that segment like the skin I will just compress it back to the base layer and that keeps it so concise throughout my entire process. few extra little tips I do have a timer next to me at all times when I'm working on commissions so typically I'll set a timer for one and a half hours for coloring for any given slot and if I need more time that'll be 30 minutes in additional what this does is that it pressures me to stay focused and anyway it gives me an idea to on which slots to upcharge depending on how much extra time it takes me to finish that commission I have a system for my Cintiq that works pretty well. The Velcro on the arm and the hack that works really well when the Cintiq disconnects. Let me know if y'all want to know more about that and leave a comment down below. I love this commission so much. I don't know whose it is. Uh, so I have Cullen from Dragon Age. Look at how many. And then I have um, Batman and Ghostmaker. Ooh. This is just like the second half of this entire canvas. We talked about it before a little bit on this channel, but like, so this is how Jasmine organizes her commissions. Truffle! So before I can continue, I gotta give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Pet Tempo. Stick around because this is an amazing pet feeder that you're gonna wanna know about. They gave us a massive 20% off discount code. Just type in Kohi Andy. That's K-O-H-I-A-N-D-I-E. The link will be down in the description, but let's go check it out real quick. So what I think is really cool about the Pet Tempo auto feeder is that you can set up to six automated meals with different portion sizes. And so I want to say the max portion size is 48. One portion is probably about two or three ounces. It's a pretty decent size. They have this option where you can record your voice and call your cat over to have like their meal whenever they have to. So we're about to record our voice for the mealtime sound. And then you hold the mic. Food time! Food time! There's also a manual option, which we're probably gonna utilize more often than not. Every time you tap 
this button, it's one portion. We're just gonna do that. This is one portion. You can actually attach and detach the stainless steel plate so you can wash them whenever you need to. And you can either use a battery or the cord that it comes with. again to Pet Temple for sponsoring this video. Again, our code is K-O-H-I-A-N-D-I-E for 20% off your order. The code is active until April 2. Get one for your friend, your local foster, or even for your own fur babies. And with that all being said, let's get back to the video. Look at that. If you spill water on this glass, <laughs> Your oven will shatter. Hey, Pat. I don't have a pizza peel, so it's just a shopping mall. Wow. So cool. There is a great big something here. Yesterday, I had to run to AutoZone because the car battery died and our neighbor, thank God, jump-started it and he went with me to AutoZone. We got a new battery. They switched it out for us. It's not cheap, but we got that done at least. We are starting a new day. I'm so tired, but I think we're mostly gonna be drying today. I kind of wanted to show you guys what we've been doing with the store and some Kickstarter progress so ugh. I've been seeing around with like the Kickstarter and then also just like figuring out this new shop stuff and then us trying to figure out a new marketplace new eyes it's really hard you know as an artist and someone even mentioned it to us for people to keep track of individual artists if you really like someone yeah that works but overall it's a lot harder versus having a marketplace where you can just like search and find the things that you want and the people that you want to see i've been messing around with google shopping because we have squarespace so we can put all our items onto google shopping our stuff has has been like popping up on Google Shopping for certain keywords and things which I think is really cool but I kind of wanted to like walk you guys through what we've been doing and also show you guys the Amazon stuff if you Google it anywhere and everywhere says that one of the only places that has been able to match up to Etsy's really good marketplace is Amazon Handmade. They have so many rules and so many regulations that you have to follow. This past year in July, they made it a requirement that all photos have to have a pure white background. So like it matches their search. It's really specific. I've been going through Reddit and a lot of people have mentioned that in the long run, Amazon has actually been better than Etsy. And it seems like their customer support so far for us at least is better than Etsy because the Etsy black hole is kind of like I can talk for hours about how messed up Etsy is and all the things about this corporation or whatever. Amazon is not much better. You know, the, the long-term goal would be we grew our following to the point where our website could just sustain itself, then we wouldn't be on Amazon. But that's not our reality right now. So we're trying it out. This is kind of what I've been working on in terms of like Kickstarter stuff because I'm drawing today. Here is like our Amazon dashboard. I haven't put my full confidence in Amazon yet. It's not like we've really uh, had sales yet. I'm still kind of messing around. Listing items on Amazon is it's really not user friendly. There are so many requirements. Their system takes a really, really, really long time to accept changes. Whereas literally any other website, you're going to change the images on something and it's going to be immediate. You know, you press upload and it's just going to show exactly what it's supposed to be. I uploaded these Jojo buttons, right? But for whatever reason, it made half of the characters be Fugo instead of their individual character names. It's really weird. I'm still, like I said, I'm still finagling with it. I'm seeing us getting some like page views, but when I, you know, go through their own search system, it's clearly still pretty hard to find. If you're not selling through Prime, they're automatically going to 
bump your listing pretty low they're going to be caring more about larger companies anyways yeah i'm not totally sold on amazon right now like i'm just kind of exploring to see how it's gonna be it's been like a few days you know i finished listing the rest of our stuff yesterday this is also just like a super early opinion i would not call it artist friendly but we're gonna see how it goes if there's one thing jasmine and i are willing to do it's exhaust our efforts <laughs> we will go from here jasmine just pulled it out hi basil that crust when they say nigella seed you need to get nigella seed this looks just like black sesame seeds, but it's not. But black sesame seeds taste more nutty, like peanut buttery. But nigella seeds, you can even smell it. It smells super peppery. Yeah. And uh, the taste is just different. totally different. So don't substitute it. Basil. Wow. Beautiful. God, it smells so good. Alright, Bob. Mm. Nothing beats fresh bread. Mm. We made one. Woo! Yummy. It's Mowgli Spay Neuter Day. We already went really early in the morning, um, but it's like about to be four o'clock. We're gonna go pick him up right now. And I need to stop saying him because we officially found out that Mowgli is a girl. We're gonna go get her. So tired, like so tired. Spay neuter days are so hard. And there's Mowgli and Andy. Hi, Mowgli. Yes. Hey, you're a girl. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Hey, come here. Be delicious. I think it represents like great learning. These are sort of get like the experience of making these great desserts. It's so good. <laughs> you're gonna be candy delicious but thank you guys so much for watching this video it was really fun to be able to kind of finally be able to just vlog at home <laughs> thank you so much for watching as always give it a like or comment or subscribe if you liked it you know it keeps us growing and thank you again to pet temple for sending us a super cool thing cats are already eating from it we're just gonna instantly integrate it into our daily life if you guys want to support us in other ways we have our store we're running a sale right now for 10 percent off check it out at the link it's koheandy.com it's kind of our brand we have a whole bunch of stuff on there you can also check out our rescues website it's pausepurs.co you can see all the ways to either apply to foster or apply to adopt if you're local and we also have our amazon wish list for all the cats you can buy them toys and, and they will be very grateful and so will we <laughs> that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching again and we'll catch you in the next one bye guys